that is there you must follow. One Buddha is said to walk with God. One Buddha found that I saved you from heaven. Walk by the side from the morning till the evening. That is a rule that is there you must follow. One Buddha is said to walk with God. And the Lord will draw near thee. Humble thyself, and his presence shall share thee. He will not walk with a proud mother's comfort. Humble thyself to walk with God. Humble thyself, and the Lord will draw near thee. Humble thyself, and his presence shall share thee. He will not walk with a proud mother's comfort. Humble thyself to walk with God. Just as the Lord in the world and his ages walk and commune with the prophets and sages, he will come now if you meet that condition. Humble thyself to walk with God. Humble thyself, and the Lord will draw near thee. Humble thyself, and his presence shall share thee. He will not walk with a proud mother's comfort. Humble thyself to walk with God. Humble thyself, and the Lord will draw near thee. Humble thyself, and his presence shall share thee. He will not walk with a proud mother's comfort. Humble thyself to walk with God. Humble thyself, and the Lord will draw near thee. Humble thyself, and his presence shall share thee. He will not walk with a proud mother's comfort. Humble thyself to walk with God. Just as the stream first I heard that is lonely, so Jesus walked with the pure and the holy. Cast out the pride and the heart first contrition. Humble thyself to walk with God. Just as the stream first I bear that is lonely, so Jesus walk with the pure and the holy. Cast out the pride and the heart first contrition. Humble thyself to walk with God. Humble thyself, and the Lord will draw near thee. Humble thyself, and his presence shall share thee. He will not walk with a proud mother's comfort. Humble thyself to walk with God. Humble thyself, and the Lord will draw near thee. Humble thyself, and his presence shall show thee. He will not walk with a proud mother's comfort. Humble thyself to walk with God. Humble thyself. And the Lord will draw near thee. Humble thyself, and his presence shall share thee. He will not walk with a proud mother's comfort. Humble thyself, to walk with God. Humble thyself, and the Lord will draw near thee. Humble thyself, and his presence shall share thee. He will not walk with a proud mother's comfort. Humble thyself to walk with Shall we pray? 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to your presence tonight. Thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to come and hear your word. Thank you for the power of your word, the truth of your word, and the fire in your word. Thank you for the mighty works you have been doing in our lives every time we come together. And Father, we pray that as your word is coming out tonight, none of us will go back the same. We shall experience the power in your word. And we shall be transformed by the power in your word. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. Brothers and sisters, tonight, we're going to leave the outline a little. And by the grace of God, the teaching this night is in the word of the Lord, according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The outline in our hands will be handled next Tuesday. Tonight, we're looking at this study. And if you have anything that you can use to jot down some points, please get it. The Spirit of the Lord actually spoke to me this morning, even after this teaching had been prepared, that I should handle this topic tonight. We're going to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm reading from verses 10 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. I'm talking about God's armor for holy soldiers. God's armor for holy soldiers. If you can just put it down that way, you will not forget the topic easily. God's armor for holy soldiers. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to verse 18. I'm reading verse 10 now. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. In verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins guard about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. In verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. In verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And in verse 18, very important, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. As you look at the teaching and the passage before us tonight, Apostle Paul was speaking to the brethren at Ephesus. And he said to them, I have shared many things with you from chapter 1 even to chapter 5. I have explained many things about your position in the kingdom of God, about the authority 
that God has given to you and about the life that God wants you to live and that kind of life that will take you to heaven. I have shown you, husband and wife, what God expects of your marriage, the love that should be in your house. I've told you many things. Now, finally, finally, he said, having told you all that I've told you, having shown you everything that I've shown you, now this is the final word, the final statement. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Apostle Paul was talking to them about the need for them to put on the whole armor of God as holy soldiers. He said in verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Don't let your power be in your own strength. Let your power, your strength, be in the might of the Lord. Let it be said, if they ask you, how do you manage to do that? You say, it is God. If not for God, I can't do it. And that's why I said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In verse 11, put on the whole armor, not some of them, not 99% of the armor, everyone, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to, to stand against the wives of the devil. In verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's important that you understand that verse 12 this night, because uh, I've listened to many teachings from many fellowships and ministers of the gospel and the interpretation they gave to that verse 12 is not actually what the holy spirit is talking about you know so many of them said eh, you don't have human enemy eh, the enemy you have they are evil spirits but you are going to discover tonight that that is not actually what the bible says now he said for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In verse 13, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand in verse 14 stand therefore having your loins guard about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace those are the part of the armor some of the parts of the armor that the Bible commands that you are to put on. And in verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, faith in the Lord, where which ye may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. In verse 17, and take the element of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And in verse 18, pray always with all prayer and supplication and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. There are three points that we discover, we saw in that passage of the Bible tonight as we're looking at God's armor for holy soldiers. Three points in the passage tonight. Number one, we saw our exhortation the exhortation from the lord the lord is encouraging exhorting us and telling us some things that we need to do as children of the lord so then we find an exhortation from the lord and then number two we also discover our enemy you know there are people that will tell you 
there are no enemies anywhere no enemies anywhere but you are going to find tonight that the bible said there are enemies and these enemies they operate with evil powers satanic powers and that you should not regard it as nothing don't say it doesn't matter that man is just ordinary flesh and blood he can't do me anything the bible said no that man that is telling you that you will not prosper is operating with a satanic power you need to put on the whole armor of god so that you can conquer him you will conquer him by the name of jesus so then we find number two our enemy and then number three we find our equipment our armor the equipment we're going to use to conquer our enemies now please take the three point now in a better way i'm going to put it in a better form number one our exhortation given by the lord our exhortation given by the lord that's number one and then number two our enemies exposed by the lord our enemies exposed by the lord the lord is exposing openly the enemies of the believers if you want to know the greatest deliverance minister the greatest deliverance minister is the holy spirit and you are going to see tonight the way the holy ghost expose the enemy so that you will not uh, just be saying eh, i don't have enemy that is uh, academic english uh, there is no enemy anywhere nobody is against me the holy ghost said no there are there are so then we find our enemies exposed by the lord and then number three we also find our equipment provided by the lord our equipment provided by the lord let me mention the three points again so that you can check them number one our exhortation given by the lord and then number two our enemies exposed by the lord and then number three our equipment our armor given provided by the lord look at point number one now our exhortation given by the lord the lord is giving us exhortation and he's a, a counseling us encouraging us that we should be strong in the lord and i'm going to show you some of the encouragement the exhortation as it is given in the bible i'm reading now that chapter six of ephesians i'm reading verses 10 to verse 11 a ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 11 a look at verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the lord that's an encouragement that's an exhortation he said no matter what is happening around you rise up and be strong in the lord don't let that thing weigh you down and pull you down and bring you to the ground don't let that problem make you to say lord i can't follow you anymore he said finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might that's an exhortation and look at verse 11 the first part of verse 11 put on the whole armor of god our father in heaven is talking to us as his children on the edge and he's telling us don't go in this journey alone put on my whole armor don't be moving on the edge without having the whole armor upon you put on the whole armor of the lord that is the first part of the exhortation now look at verse 13 you are going to find other part of the exhortation in verse 13 we are for take unto you he said the armor is provided and it is already released from heaven your job is to take that armor take it take it and put it on take unto you the whole armor of god that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day there is a time that is evil 
the time of storm, the time of persecution, the time of tribulation, of battle, of attack against our Christian life. If you do not put on the old armor of the Lord, it may not be easy for you to conquer the powers of the enemy. So in verse 30, he said, Wherefore, take unto you the old armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. When you have put on the whole armor, keep on standing firm in the faith. When you have put on God's whole armor, and you are equipped with heavenly equipment, and everything is there, the Bible says, keep on standing. That's an exhortation. That's an encouragement from the Lord. And not only that, look at verses 18 to 20. Verses 18 to 20. In verse 18 now, pray always. That's an encouragement. That's an exhortation. The Lord is pushing us up and he's telling us, pray always. Don't pray only when you have some challenges. Pray when there are challenges. Pray when there are no challenges. Pray always with all prayer every kind of prayer you can pray prayer of thanks you can pray, pray every kind of prayer aggressive prayer fiery prayer pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto when you are prayed keep on watching that means wait on the lord for the answer the answer will come watching thereunto with all perseverance sometimes it may look like there is a delay in the answer to your prayers it may look like as if the answer will not come the bible says persevere that means hold on and keep on holding on until the answer come with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and in verse 19 and for me apostle paul said pray for me also that means god is telling us that as you are praying pray for the pastor pray for your pastor pray for the gs pray for the leaders pray for everyone that god has placed as leaders over you look at it in verse 19 and for me that utterance may be given unto me that i may open my mouth boldly you know uh, uh, look at uh, apostle paul with all the anointing and the grace of god upon his life he's still asking for the grace of boldness he said because there are some places you will get to and you will find it difficult to preach there are places you will go and it will be like i say we should just go don't talk if you talk here there will be trouble but apostle paul said no pray for me that i will be bold to open my mouth anywhere any place he said i need a prayer that he, he said that i may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel that i may explain the mystery the fullness of the hidden mystery of the gospel look at verse 19 uh, and then look at verse 20 for which i am an ambassador apostle paul said is an ambassador of the gospel a representative of jesus to declare the gospel of christ everywhere an ambassador in bonds in chain in bondage the time he was writing this epistle he was already in prison in rome and you know at that time because he was in prison in rome he was uh, actually uh, inbound and someone he was dictating it he was uh, saying it and someone was writing it for him now look at that verse 20 for which i'm an ambassador in bonds that therein i may speak boldly as i ought to speak now as you look at this uh, exhortation from the lord the lord is exhorting us number one we should be strong everyone that is a child of god in a time like this the bible says be strong be strong in the lord and in the power of his might number two 
the Lord is also exhorting us. He said, prepare yourself and put on the whole armor of God. Prepare yourself. Put on God's own armor. And then number three, the Lord is exhorting us to stand firm. He says, stand firm. Stand firm in the faith. When you are put on the old armor of the Lord, don't look back. Stand firm. We have one prayer point tonight. If the armor is not there, every one of us, we are going to ask Holy Spirit and say, Holy Ghost, put your whole armor upon me. I want to wear it. I want to put it on. How can I go home without your whole armor? How can I be walking around, going around, and I don't have your whole armor? Put your whole armor upon me. Look at it now. He said, another exhortation is that we should pray. He said, pray always. Pray for yourself. Pray for other people, other believers, brethren in the church. And then number three, pray for your pastors. Pray for our leaders. Pray for those that God has made leaders over us. Now, all the exhortation from the Lord, they are for every one of us here tonight. As you are listening to the word of the Lord, the Lord is telling you, be strong. No matter what is happening around, be strong. No matter what the enemy is doing, be strong. No matter the challenge from any corner, be strong. Don't let any of those battles or problems pull you down. If you are facing persecution in the house, be strong. If you are facing persecution in your marriage, be strong. If there is a battle against you in your finances, be strong. If there is a challenge against your life concerning your faith in the market, be strong. If the enemy is fighting you because of your decision for holiness, be strong. If they are saying, yes, you either drop your Bible or you go away from here, be strong. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let's go now to point number two. We're going to see the enemy. That's exactly, I want you to listen carefully to the word of the Lord tonight. Number two point is, our enemies exposed by the Lord. Our enemies exposed by the Lord. If you are just coming in tonight, we are actually teaching a topic a little different from the outline in your hand. That outline will be taken by the grace of God next Bible study. But tonight, we're looking at God's armor for holy soldiers. And we have been looking at three points. Number one, our exhortation given by the Lord. The Lord is giving us exhortation and he's encouraging us and he's telling us, be strong. Don't let anything shift you. And as you are strong, put on God's own armor and stand firm and be prayerful. And the number two point is our enemies exposed by the Lord. Our enemies exposed by the Lord. And the number three point, our equipment provided by the Lord. The Lord has prepared the equipment. He has provided it. Our job is to carry it and put it on. As a child of God, if you do not put on the armor of the Lord, how can you be able to face this enemy that the Holy Ghost mentioned here tonight? Now, let's look at point number two now. Our enemies exposed by the Lord. Please start from verse 11. I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God. That's the first statement. Everyone. It says, put on God's whole armor. If there is any prayer we shall pray here tonight, it is, Lord, let your own armor come upon me. I want to wear it. Just as we wear clothes, the Holy Ghost said, put on the whole armor of God, still in verse 11, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's the first enemy. The first enemy is the devil himself. 
The first enemy is Satan. The devil himself. And please listen carefully. The word of the Lord is telling us it is not the power of Satan that you should be afraid of. No. It is not the power of Satan that should make you worry. No. What you should look at are the tactics, the craftiness, and the deceit of the devil. And that's what the Bible calls the wiles of the devil. Wiles of the devil. Tactics of the devil. Craftiness of the devil. Deceit of the devil. You know, you want to go on a long time fasting and prayer. And as you are preparing for that program, this sickness just come. And the sickness come. And, the, you know, the sickness begin to deal with your body. And you are saying, what type of sickness is this? What type of sickness is this? And you know, if you do not pray, that is a tactic of the devil to stop you from praying that prayer. That's the tactic of the devil to stop you from praying that prayer. You want to leave your house on time so that you can get to the fellowship. So that you can hear the word of the Lord and be blessed. And suddenly, some little, little problems started cropping up in the house. This one is happening. The other one is happening. And you are there trying to solve the problem. And, the, you know, the devil is trying to tell you, will you leave this thing and go like that? Will you leave this thing and go like that? And before you know it, the time is gone. That was a tactic of the devil to hinder you from getting to the fellowship on time. And then you know sometimes uh, you want to uh, actually serve the Lord and these things start to happen. Uh, the battle come here from here. The battle come from there. And the, you are looking at it and say, how can I serve God in this kind of situation? That is a tactic of the devil to hinder you from serving the Lord. That's a wile of the devil, a trick of the devil to make you not to serve the Lord. Now, let me give you a testimony. One of our sisters, by the grace of God, uh, the husband uh, was persecuting her because of Christianity. And the husband, you know, was living outside Nigeria. And the sister was suffering persecution. Uh, uh, the, you know, it, it even involved beating, you know, with wounds all over her body. Several times when she will come to fellowship, there will be wounds all over her body. And I, we started praying. And as we pray, uh, the husband came back and now gave her one final warning. He said, I'm traveling uh, to social place. By the time I come back, make sure you have said bye-bye to that church. Make sure you have said bye-bye. And don't ever let me hear that you are in that church again. And the husband said, now, if you know you will not say bye-bye to that church, you should choose between me and that church. That's a tactic of the devil. The devil is threatening you with your marriage to see whether you are going to drop Jesus and continue following his own way. And the, uh, you know, the husband entered his car, drove away. And after 30 minutes, he just came back. And somebody that said he was traveling, he just came back again and he, you know, entered the house and he asked the woman, I'm not even waiting till I come back. I need the answer now. That means all those 30 minutes that he was driving, all that he was thinking about is my wife, the church, Jesus, what kind, my wife, the church, until he turned back. And then he came back to the house and he said, now, I need the answer now. Give me the answer. Choose between me and that church. Choose between me and that born again, that holiness, that righteousness, uh, that church. Choose between me and they. And the woman said, I don't need to think twice before I give you an answer. You have been beating me almost to kill me. So what again are you going to do that is still going to be me? The only thing you can do is to send me out of this house. See, I have chosen Jesus and I will continue to follow Jesus and I will not depart from the Lord and I will fellowship in that church. And the man said, and you are bold to say that. You are bold to say that. The man raised up and slapped her. And the sister fell down. And the man went out and called our sister's family members. I need you people now. 
They said, what happened? What happened? He said, he said, it's more than emergency. Did somebody die? He said, it's more than death. Come now. And the people, out of confusion, out of, you know, because the man had a lot of money. So they started running down. You see the tactic of the devil? The devil will be running up and down, going up and down, finding people here and there, running at a skater, just to see if you are going to drop your Bible and go back from the Lord. That's why Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. And you know, the, the husbands, uh, the, 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 the family of the wife, the sister, they came. And when they arrived, the man told them, this woman, look at, look at the problem. He has been going to that church. And I said, no, I don't want that holiness church here. Those people, you know, you know look, the women, they don't dress well. They do this, they do, you know, holiness all the time. They pray too much quietness. They don't want to watch uh, television. They don't want to look at this picture. That is, what type of thing is this? I and this woman, we suffered for this wealth, these riches I have. How can it be now? I'm going to club. My wife is not by my side. I want to attend occasion. My wife is not there. What kind of... Am, am I a bachelor? I'm married. So, please, talk to your daughter. Otherwise, now, this night, go with her. And you know, after how many children? Six of them. And you know, these children, they are not young. You need to see them. Men, women. And you know, they were all inside the room and they were looking. They were peeping through there. Let's know what will be the final verdict from our father to our mother. And you know, they themselves were not coming to the church. Only their mother was coming. But they were actually having pity on their mother and said, ah, even if uh, uh, she had decided to go to that, why do you want to kill her? Leave her. And eventually, the mother now knelt down and started crying. Oh, is this how you will kill me? You want to kill me now? That is what the Bible calls subtle humility. You know, the dangerous trick of the devil, the deceit of the devil, final trick of the devil to see whether you will go. He said, am I not your mother? And the father said, there is no need of you kneeling down. It's just one way. One way. Leave that church or I myself disown you from today. You are no more my daughter. And the woman said, uh, I'm still going to be your daughter. And you know, I've stopped bearing your son name for a long time. I'm bearing the name of my husband. So, but as for you being your daughter, you can't deny that your blood is in my body. So that one is a settled matter. And then he uh, told the mother, Mama, stop kneeling down. You know, you are getting old so that uh, your knee will not have crowns. Get up and sit down. The sister was looking. And he said, now, what's the final? He said, I'm not leaving Jesus. I will follow Jesus. I will follow Holy Way. And I will remain in that church. And the man said, go with her. And they said, no, we'll never go with her. She will not enter our own house. Never. We don't know you again. You are not our daughter. And they left that night. And then the man said, go out of my house. And the sister went out. And all those six big soldiers they came out of the room and they said now enough is enough enough is enough if you tell her to go out you also will go out and we're going to lock the door the Lord will fight for you never mind the weapon that the lord uses you can even use your child you can use anybody and those uh, so just came out six of them they were all around and they told the man and the man said are you people he said yes enough is enough you have been beating our mother what's the problem he said you want to go to a particular church you want to serve god that way that's that is it leave her enough is enough and uh, the woman was at the door and eventually they opened the door and uh, you know they brought their mother in and the man rushed to the woman and beat her and uh, you know pursue her pursue her and they went to the you know to the to the veranda and he pushed the woman there from the ups up there and the woman fell down from that far place and landed on the ground but the lord jesus was waiting for her and the power of the lord saved her and she survived 
but you know and the children shouted you have killed our mother you have killed our mother and the man's eyes cleared and he looked ah, i've pushed down my wife i've just killed my wife i've killed my wife i've killed my and he was uh, you know talking to himself he was going downstairs the children were shouting on him the neighbors gathered together the tenant everybody they were all there and they look at the ground and the sister you know she actually has survived uh, God did not allow anything to happen to her, but she said, this is my only opportunity. And she just kept quiet like a dead woman. And the man was say, please, my wife, please, my wife, please, my wife. And the sister just remained like that. And you know, uh, she didn't uh, open her eyes. She didn't do anything. And the man was, you know, troubled. And he was saying, please, oh, if you will go to that church, go there. Oh, if you will remain there, remain there. Oh, if that is where you will be living, you go and live in that church. Just please, you know, wake up, wake up, wake up, oh, wake up. And the sister just remained like that. And the, the children said, carry her, oh, carry her. And the man carried the woman right from down there. I was carrying her up. And the sister just, you know, remained quiet in the man's hand. And her sister just remained quiet. Like, you may say, well, uh, well, is that not deceit? No, it is not. That is how to win a battle. And you know, she just remained like that. If she could, if she opened her eyes immediately, the man might have given her another slap. So she decided, you know, just to remain quiet like that. And the man carried her up and, you know, getting up. The man was crying. The man knelt down. The man raised up his two hands. I will never, never touch you again. Oh, go to that church. Remain there. Live there. Sleep there. Stay there whatever you like. Oh, I will never. Oh, I will never. The man was crying. The children were crying. Mommy, wake up. Mommy, wake up. Mommy, wake up. The sister just, you know, remained quiet. And after a long time, it just, uh, you know, started opening her eyes, you know, gradually. And they mentioned just something. Milk, milk, milk. And the man, you know, you know, just mention milk. You know, the man said, ah, milk everywhere. And the man said, that, uh, the man rushed by him, said, enter the car. We're driving, you know, anyhow, just looking for milk everywhere. The man didn't even remember to ask whether it is dry milk, powdered milk, or liquid milk. And the man did, he just went, pack everything, milk here, milk in cut, you know, he filled a big carton and carried it to the house. He said, Mick, he said, please just help me, help me, help me, oh, help me, help me. Help me. And this guy just uh, you know, just uh, you know, take the milk and the man is he told the man, take it by yourself. You know, you know, the man started pressing the milk into her mouth and the sister, you know, was swallowing it uh, and the man said, Never again, never that was how she won the battle. You will win your battle in the name of Jesus. So look at the word of the Lord tonight. We're, we're looking at the tactics and the tricks and the lies of the devil. You know, some of the things that the devil used to do, that, uh, you know, all that the devil is just trying to do is to see that you do not really serve the Lord and that you are not able to follow the Lord and make heaven the tactics of the devil. That is the first part of the enemy. But look at the second part part of the enemy that the Bible mentioned in verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That word wrestle means struggling, means battling to make it, fighting to make it, struggling to succeed, trying hard for it to work. You put this one there, you put the other one there, you want it to work, the thing is not working out. You want it to succeed. The thing is not succeeding. And you say, oh, it's the economy of Nigeria. If to say the economy is good, I think I will have made it. The Bible say, no. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It is not because of the economy of Nigeria. It is not because you don't have the right certificate. It is not because that man didn't give you the money. It is not because the money you have is not enough for your business. No. That is like as if you are fighting against flesh and blood. The Bible said no. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. He said, don't look at the challenge you are facing with ordinary physical eye and said it is nothing it's just ordinary problem there is no problem you know there is no problem just ordinary problem he said he said but 
against principalities. I'm going to explain that very soon. Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So many times we have problem in our academic program. And then we say, it's because I didn't read well. It's been, maybe, uh, uh, maybe I don't know. I don't really, I can't understand. Maybe I didn't read well. That's why I'm having problem. The Bible said, no. There are forces of darkness that are operating against your academics at the back of the curtain. Sometimes we have problem in our health and at times in our family and sometimes in our marriage. And when the problem is going on in a marriage, maybe it's your wife that is a problem, or your husband, then you say, I don't know why this woman is giving me a problem. It is not the woman that you are dealing with only. It is the powers of the kingdom of darkness that are operating through her to fight against your Christian life. Then he said, our business, our journey, our expectation, and our desire so many times we have problems and then we say it's ordinary it is not ordinary let me give you this now this miracle happened in god is able here and the lord used our church to liberate this man from the bondage of satan in a particular place in nigeria there was a man that uh, his family was having problem with another family the problem had been on for some time because of land and when this man he just uh, got up one day and said he was traveling to lagos let him go to lagos let him walk make money and come back to help his family he said that he looked at this uh, father's compound there is no good there was no good house in that compound there was nothing moving in that compound so he decided that he was going to labor and uh, struggle and as, as the lord blesses him he will not come back he will build a very beautiful house and he will modernize the compound and uh, a day before he traveled somebody from the other compound told one person to go and tell him that as he goes so he will come back that he will come back empty-handed that he will not achieve anything in that lagos that is going ah that is it to go that matters it is let's see how what he will bring that he will surely come back empty-handed and this man said yeah, he's just ordinary human being like me how can he tell me i will not succeed it will never happen the man thought he was fighting with flesh and blood he didn't know that that man that made that comment was speaking from a demonic with a demonic power he was speaking with the power of witchcraft the man had done something horrible and was prepared to do more against him this brother traveled to lagos and he was in lagos for some years he struggled and tried nothing was working he lived all the places he was living in lagos they had no address they, you cannot even say this was the address he was always living in those you know old places he was looking for way to survive there was no way and after some time somebody told him that if we could have a shop around shagamo where you know uh he will that he will get it make it there so he packed from lagos and he moved over to shagamo is he not coming back home gradually this thing happened there you know i, I don't want to tell you the place but he's somewhere after here he's up up there and you know the man now was in shagamo and he tried he tried he couldn't get it and somebody said, if you can go to J4, then it will be better for you there. And he went to J4. And after some time from J4, he started living at Ore. You know, he's coming gradually. Gradually. With nothing. Nothing. And then at Ore, he was there. He was staying in that place. You know, he would do this job. He would do the other one. He, you know, all sort of things he was selling. He would sell oil. He would sell this. Nothing worked. Then he left and moved to Bini. And things became worse. He didn't stay long. He went and started living at Agbo. He lived in all those places. And gradually, gradually, he was in Asaba. And before you knew it, he was in Onisha. And before you knew it, he went and started living at Mbibi. 
he was going home gradually gradually nothing he had nothing and uh, you know by the time he would became tired one day it was in the according to our brother he said in the afternoon he just took a baco bag that was all and put the uh, clothes the uh, sander he put it in that baco bag and he carried it and he entered inside the vehicle <laughs> and he started going back to village and he entered the village in the late night he was carrying that baco bag he was now older he had wasted 13 years of his life going round and round achieving nothing and eventually when he got to uh, the uh, you know the entrance leading to their compound he was looking here and there whether anybody would recognize him because he was carrying back a bag and when he saw that there was nobody there he sneaked into his own father's compound like a thief and he you know he went and hid himself and there you know it was the second day he didn't know that they were already aware that he had come back the second day uh, those people said, didn't we tell you you will come back empty and uh, you know, you did even the things you went to Lagos with, you didn't bring them back. Everything perished in Lagos. He said, well, where, what, what is it? Where is the money now? Build a house, let us see. Modernize the compound, let us see. And they were boasting more and more. They were boasting more and more. And this man was rotting in the village. He was there perishing. You know, things became worse until his sister that new God is able had to tell him uh, let's go and they came and by the grace of God I said you took your enemy with little hand you thought that they are just ordinary human beings that's why Bible says here yeah, let's go back there in verse 12 it said for we wrestle not against flesh and blood don't take those matters with uh, ordinary hand don't say it is just a common it's happening to everybody how do you know how do you know it is happening to everybody how do you know that that case is not peculiar how do you know that that matter is not peculiar it's safe for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities these are territorial spirits powers that are ruling over territory that are ruling over areas now a servant of god in our church they will understand what i'm saying now you will see that uh, the lord has told you go to so so place and work for me and he has given you that particular city for you but you must remember there is a principality operating there and for you to conquer that place for the lord you must conquer that principality first. And if you don't conquer that principality and you just go there, you'll be laboring. And as you are laboring, you'll be having a problem. You'll be having problem, and you'll be wondering, what is the problem? You will put this method, it will not work. You put the other method, it will not work. You put that way too. Because you think that you are fighting with flesh and blood, you do not know that you are contending with principalities. And you do not know that those principalities, they were the powers ruling that environment. Before you are sent by God, to take it over for the kingdom. If you don't conquer that principality, you will not be able to make it way. And you see, and when there is a principality somewhere, it will fight with all that is within his power to see that that servant of the Lord does not succeed. But if you can conquer, and the Lord said, you will. He said, you will conquer. Because he has armor that he has prepared. He said, once you put on that old armor, you will conquer that principality. If you put on that old armor, you will defeat that enemy. And then he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, back to verse 12, but against principalities, against powers. These powers are the lesser one to principalities. The principality rule over cities and the kingdoms and states and nations but powers rule over areas and environment 
This is an area now. There is a power operating here. The other side is an area. There is a power operating there. And if you have, you are a pastor in a branch of a church, and that church is located in a zone, in an area. If you don't conquer the power that is operating there, you may not make headway. If you think that you can use human wisdom to do the work of the Lord there, it will not work. There is a power there. And then he said, and the rulers of the darkness of this world, the rulers of darkness of this world, they are those people and forces that are controlling, uh, you know, groups. Uh, this is a witchcraft group. They hold meeting there. There is somebody leading that group. This is uh, an Ogboni house. The Ogboni people are holding meeting there. There is somebody leading that particular place. That person is a ruler of darkness, of this world. The, the, this is uh, an Ekanka house. There is somebody over there. That person is a ruler. Uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a great message house, Amok Rosicutian house. There is somebody, Guru Maharaji House, there is somebody there. All those places, they have a rulers of darkness that are ruling them. Let me give you this as an example. A, every witchcraft coven must have at least 13 members. This is a research that we did uh, in a, for what we call demonology, when you are studying about demons. Every witchcraft coven must have 13 members at least they may be more than that but they must have at least 13 members and the number must not be even you cannot divide the number by two it must be indivisible by two it's either they are 13 or they are 15 or they are 17 or they are 19 i know you understand what i'm saying you can't divide it by two now and the last person out of that 13 one of them must be a man one of them must be a man and usually those people that are men in the coven there they are either native doctors herbalists or those that uh, you know operate in prayer houses you know when you go to that prayer house before you enter there the person is mentioning your name oh my daughter your name is so 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 and this and that and then you know you say this is your problem the problem the problem and it's you know it's telling you everything that man is a wizard it belongs to a witchcraft coven and he has that place that looked like a prayer house that looked like a church and I want to tell you also, those people that use Pentecostal witchcraft, a pastor in the Pentecostal church that will boast against you and say, if you leave this church, you will never, never, that man is a wizard, it's not of the Lord. A pastor that will rise up and say, if you don't give all this to you, this will happen to you, that man is a wizard. He belongs to a witchcraft coven and he's operating there as member of that coven. Now, that particular coven now, the man himself may not be the head, but he will be their major representative among human beings. He will be their major representative, getting members for Satan, recruiting souls to hell, bringing people to the kingdom of darkness, that particular person. And, uh, you know, those uh, powers of Satan, they will be helping him in whatever that he wants, in whatever that he needs, they will give it to him until their souls will be damned in hell. Now the Bible says, we wrestle against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Now look at the last one. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. That one's supposed to interest you. Because, you know, uh, there, are, there are so many people that their stomach filled with wickedness. All that they have within them wickedness when they wake up wickedness when they are thinking wickedness and they will be boasting you know sometimes this is your shop you wake up in the morning you get to the shop somebody come and drop a poison there and you begin to wonder who put poison in front of my shop who put this thing there who dropped this in front of our door who brought this into the compound who is hanging that in there you don't know it is somebody that is with spiritual wickedness bible says they operate in high places that high places means altars they operate from satanic altars evil altars 
here and there. And because of those altars, it gives them power. They are able to operate against people. They are able to operate against even believers. When a believer does not have the whole armor of God, these powers are able to operate against that child of God. And that is why somebody can boast and say, eh, this will not happen. If as long as he's there, that will not happen. The man that is boasting is, is, is operating with spiritual wickedness in high places. And the word of God says, don't take your problem as nothing, as common, as ordinary. Don't take that battle as nothing, as common as ordinary. He said, the battle is coming from either of this group, either of these people, either of this area. That is where the battle is coming from. And the Bible now say, for you to overcome, put on the whole armor of God. That takes me now to point number three. And you know, when we get to point number three, I'm going to go back to the testimony of that brother. And now eventually, God is victory. When you have the old armor of God, the devil bows before you. When you have the old armor of God, the enemy bows before you. Now, that takes me now to point number three. Our equipment provided by the Lord. Our equipment provided by the Lord. I'm going to start from verse 14. Chapter 6, Ephesians, from verse 14. He said, stand therefore. That's the first thing that the Lord is talking about. He says, stand firm. As a child of God, stand firm. Having your loins guard about with truth. The first equipment, the first part of the armor is the belt of truth. He said, let that belt be there. Let that belt be there so that your, your dresses will be standing firm. It will not lose. It will not fall. He said, stand therefore and put on the belt of truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. That is number two. He said, as you have the truth, you must also have God's righteousness. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter whom the enemy may be. If you are standing on the truth and you hold on to the righteousness of God and you are living a righteous life, you will be more than conquer. Now look at it now. He said, have God's righteousness. And in verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The third part of the armor is the sander of evangelism. He said, put it on. Wear the sander every day. Wear the sander anywhere you are. Put on the sander of evangelism. That's what the Bible meant when it said, your feet showed. Your feet putting on the preparation of the gospel of peace. And in verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, we are with, ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Little, little arrows that the enemy throws at people. He said, when you have the shield, the shield will defend you. The arrows will not come to you. And that shield is your faith. You have faith that there is nothing that God cannot do. Before even the miracle happened, you already believe it will happen. And why God is doing it, you are going along with God and you say, nothing will stop this blessing. This blessing will come. Even when there is a delay, you said, this blessing will come. The Lord will prove his power. Now look at it again. He said, with that shield of faith, you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. In verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. He said, in all the armor, don't let anything touch your salvation. That salvation you have gotten from the Lord, make sure it is there all the time. The helmet. Wear that helmet